Uh, we talked actually about making this adjustment, raising the weights up and down, and how in this particular scale, and also in, in, you know, in both the old style black line and the new style gray line Toledo, uh, again, that adjustment is designed for correcting an error that is linear and in the same direction. Now I'd like to just briefly point out one other scale, and this says Detecto on it, but there are various manufacturers have actually used and adopted and private labeled this head over the years. And one of the things I'd kind of like to show you is the difference between that old style Toledo and the old style and the new style both, and these major weights. And you can see these massive weights right here. Well, as compared to these other devices, you'll notice that they, the pendulums don't hang straight up and down. They're actually a little bit uh, away from center. So when you make an adjustment on this type of scale, you're gonna overcorrect by 50%. So if we had one graduation of error, uh, we would basically go ahead and, and again, overcorrect by another, an additional half of a graduation. Uh, because when you, uh, there is a set, if you're making a fine adjustment, there are set screws in each of these. If you're making a coarse adjustment, you'd simply raise or lower the balls. But you can see that how massive those weights are and just a little bit of movement, you know, is going to have a, a very large effect on the balance of the scale. So anytime we would make um, an adjustment on these, we would need to rebalance the scale and retest the scale. If we can pan back to the old style, uh, what, we're, what we'd like to kind of demonstrate now is we've, what we've already determined is that the scale appears to us to have a linear error. And if I can get maybe in the way of the camera a little bit, call your attention right here, I see minus one, minus two, minus three, I believe the error is about minus four graduations at capacity. So that would sort of mean that, you know, we've done our shift test, uh, we've tested the scale for repeatability, and we believe that it's working properly. And in this scenario, at the first quadrant, we see an error of minus one. At the second quadrant, we see an error of minus two. At the third quadrant, we see an error of minus three. And at the fourth quadrant, we're now seeing an error of minus four graduations. A little while ago, I kind of started, I started to, a little bit to talk about your grandfather clock and say, well, there's a really simple solution if your scale is operating slow or fast. Okay, if the scale is slow, then we're going to raise those weights to speed the device up. And if the scale is fast, then we're going to lower those major weights to speed the device down. And the same is true of your grandfather clock. Uh, there's a, a little adjustment on it, a little screw down near the bottom of the pendulum. If you raise that screw up, it will sp speed the clock up. And if you lower that screw down, it will slow the clock down. In this scenario, I'm going to make a little adjustment. <clears throat> and I'll take these tools and I want to speed the scale up. So what I'm actually going to do is raise these pendulums up. And the benefit actually to having the, uh, the indicator be on the chart as opposed to reading fast and be above the chart is that, okay, well at least we, we can see the indication compared to graduations. So I have, you know, a number of graduations. And it may take us a couple of adjustments here. And I'm not tightening these terrifically, uh, but I will come back and verify the tightness on them. You never, never want to leave anything loose in the head. Okay, now, I've gotten actually pretty close. Um, the indicator is just about as close to full capacity as I can get it. So I'm actually going to simply uh, tighten both of the adjustments, recheck the, to make sure that nothing's moved, and then I'll unload the scale and check balance 
and, and test it again. I could have moved it just a little bit. It seemed like it, they, uh, they, they both went down. So if I'm right now on the bottom side of the line, it won't surprise me. However, it looks like it held pretty good, okay? Uh, if I really wanted to get a very, very fine adjustment, uh, for instance, if I wanted to speed it up or slow it down just a little bit, what I might do is just loosen the, you know, if I want to slow it down, I might just loosen that bottom nut about a quarter of a turn and, and tighten the top nut. And that would give you a very, very fine adjustment. We want to make sure that we have a, a good zero indication. If, if we're, we may be just a fraction behind zero. I'm going to give it just a, probably a quarter of a turn. And that looks about as close, you know, maybe another fraction, eighth of a turn. Now, on this particular scale, the quadrants would be indicated by first quarter being 31 pounds and four ounces, half capacity is 62 pounds, eight ounces, Third quarter is 93 pounds, 12 ounces, and then full is 125. Now, with these other dials, uh, if you want to pan over here for a moment, uh, one of the things you'll notice is in class, uh, we simply have these so that we could back balance the dials uh, to a zero point, and then we would use we additional weights for checking linearity, uh, repeatability, and we would, we would be able to pan seal those heads uh, with a 30-pound weight kit. Uh, most, most of the dials would take uh, 25 or 26 pounds to pull them from reference zero to full capacity. Okay, we're looking for 20, 30, one pound, four ounces, and that looks like we came, you know, we were as we were uh, maybe a graduation uh, off or slow a little while ago. Looks to me like we're doing pretty good. That's about as close as, you know, as I can really determine it. We're going to go to half capacity. We're going to go to 20, 40, 60, 2 pounds and eight ounces. And you'll notice that that is uh, well, you know, touching the line, uh, needless to say, al almost perfect. All right, we'll take our small weights off. And now the third quarter is actually 93 and 12 pounds. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 93, 8, and 4. Okay, so 93 pounds, 12 ounces is just about as close as you, it, you know, possibly can be. Now I'll go back to my, uh, I'll take the 10 off. And now we've got 80, 100, 120 and five more and you can see that this scale is pretty doggone close uh, I really perceive no detectable error here we would now probably go through the uh, the rest of any other testing trimming obviously this would be this calibration would be done after the shift test is good, 
after the scale has good repeatability. And that's a wrap.